10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and lift off. Starliner is headed back to space on the shoulders of Atlas, powered by a workforce dedicated to its success. Confirmation of a good MET epic timer on Starliner. Now let's execute its role program. Uh, Already ready is now throttling down to maintain the crew and heads up position to get crew on board today. This is the first plan throttled down for Atlas in preparation for Max Q. Max Q, maximum enemy pressure Olivia. Now, atmosphere forces are the highest Starliner or Atlas will face during the uphill climb. Mach 1, Atlas 5 and Starliner are now supersonic. Fecal now throttling up. Up, ne up next in about 20 seconds, Starliner's two solid rocket boosters will run out of fuel and burn out. And we have burnout on both SRBs. Good crew module forward link connection. Already ready is throttling back up to full thrust. Now that we pass the solid rocket booster burnout, you'll soon see those two solid rocket boosters separate from the vehicle. Atlas V now weighs just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of 2,800 pounds per second. And we have indication of SRB jettison. Atlas continues to ascend using solely the RD-180 engine. That's about 850,000 pounds of thrust at sea level. Already ready is throttling down slightly as expected. Engine response looks good. Teams here on the ground confirming Starliner has a good trajectory. We're now two minutes and 55 seconds into today's flight. Flying at an altitude of 56 kilometers. Our next throttle down will be to control acceleration forces, uh, limit forces on the crew to below 4 Gs. That is safe for an extended period of time. One minute remaining in this burn. One minute to Biko. Already is now throttling to maintain 3.5 G acceleration on the vehicle. Starliner flying off the uh, east coast at this point at an uh, altitude of 80 kilometers now, moving at a rate of 1,187 miles per hour. It's just passing North Carolina and Virginia off the northeastern seaboard. For those of you watching along the coastline, you might be able to see this launch. And we have Pico booster engine cutoff. We have successful sta success staging. Pre-start on the RL tens.
We have ignition on both RL10s. Centaur's now gone to closed loop steering. Just passed through several milestones. Teams here on the teams here on the ground reporting that all are looking good. Ascent cover jettison there that provided that and aerodynamic have structure jettison. to the top of Starliner, protecting the docking equipment during ascent. And now that Starliner and Centaur are free of the atmosphere, well into the vacuum of space, that aeroskirt has been jettisoned. Now six minutes into today's launch, Starliner continuing to accelerate up the North American coast. Everything going smoothly so far. Starliner and Centaur have been ticking through their ascent milestones right on track, including the booster stage separation, Centaur ignition, and aeroskirt jettison. A number of status calls we'll be listening for in the next several minutes, but if all continues to go well, the next major milestone to watch out for is the main engine cutoff when Starliner will be officially in space. We heard a report from uh, ULA's team. We had a, a little bit of an overperformance on the booster, but the, that's a good Five thing. Centaur is more than capable of adjusting on the fly in its closed loop performance. Centaur pressures are stable. Centaur looks good. Flight control teams are also monitoring the performance of the sublimator on Starliner right now. The sublimator is what is used to control cabin temperatures going up to space and coming home. Normally we use uh, the radiators on the service module, but uh, those are not powered up until we get into orbit. We heard confirmation that St. John's abort zone is open. We pre-select these uh, splashdown zones in the case of any needed aborts. Um, the first one would be the Saint off the coast of St. John's, Nova Scotia. We just heard the flight dynamics officer report everything is pretty good. Flight controllers here in Mission Control confirming that our main engine, main engine cutoff time is looking stable. It is going to be 11 minutes and 50 seconds into the flight. We are now 8 minutes and 50 seconds in, so that's uh, still about 3 minutes to go until we hit that milestone. Now one of the next calls that we will hear is that the Shannon aboard zone will be open. 
Now, you can see on your screens that Starliner is making its way up the North American coast, just starting to go into the Atlantic Ocean, Northern Atlantic Ocean. We pre-plan our flight trajectories so uh, we would not aboard a crew into the middle of the ocean. They'd be near enough to land for quick and speedy recovery. So we're still in that St. John's abort zone. Expect to hear that Shannon open call coming. And we just heard that call. Shannon now open, sister liner. Could potentially make that abort landing off the coast of Ireland now if needed, but so far no reason to think it will be. Starliner currently 153 kilometers above uh, the Pacific Ocean, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, and that's about 95 miles. Sixty seconds to Miko. We are eleven minutes into today's flight. Centaur and Starliner are passing Mach twenty three, Mach twenty three point three and counting. Altitude of just under one hundred and fifty kilometers. Miko's main engine cutoff when both of dual, when the dual engine Centaur RL 10s are scheduled to shut down. That again is coming up at 11 minutes and 50 seconds. About five seconds away now. And we have Miko 1. Center engines have cut off. RCS is now at 100% Main engine cut off, so. right on time. Starliner is in space, but not done with the ascent milestones. Hearing in the room that it was a good main engine cut off. The next milestone that we'll be looking for is launch vehicle separation, when Starliner will separate from Centaur booster and fly on its own. Even after that happens, we'll have about 15 minutes until our final major milestone in today's ascent, the orbital insertion burn that will raise the perigee, or low point of Starliner's orbit, out of the Earth's atmosphere. So stick with us. We're not done yet. Now 12 minutes and 30 seconds into today's flight. We just heard our Atlas console position report a spacecraft separation for 1450 after launch. Still about two minutes away. Now right now, ULA teams are confirming that Centaur is in a good configuration for separation, making sure that all of the pressures in the tanks are stable and it will be able to conduct a proper disposal burn later. Flight control teams here in the room are moving to their insertion checklists. Sixty seconds to spacecraft set. Centaur has now achieved its separation attitude. Just under a minute now to go into the launch vehicle separation. The team here on the ground reporting that Starliner and Centaur are both ready for it in the right orientation and on a stable trajectory. Thirty seconds to start our separation. Centaur is holding attitude for Starliner separation. Ten seconds to separation.
And we have confirmation of Starliner separation. And Starliner is flying alone on its way to orbit. Confirm LV separation. Confirm good LV separation. Thanks, ULA, for a smooth ride to space. And thank you, Dylan, for your help on that ascent commentary. That milestone behind us, the next one we'll be watching for is that orbital insertion burn. That is going to raise the perigee or the low point of Starliner's orbit out of the Earth atmosphere, putting it uh, in space for its full orbit. Uh, that's an important, important milestone to reach. It's going to be a 45 second burn. It'll change Starliner's velocity about 85 meters per second or 190 miles per hour. And that's going to be coming up at the 31 minute mark in today's orbit. We're now just under 16 minutes into today's flight, so still about 15 minutes to go for that. So there's a number of things that flight controllers are working on right now. They're transitioning Starliner from its launch mode over to its orbit mode. That includes powering up things like antennas, heaters, uh, and those radiators that I mentioned earlier. We have good targeting for orbital insertion, a good forward command link, and a good MET epoch timer. Starliner making its way over the North Atlantic. Some other things going on right now. They are powering down some what's called demonstration flight instrumentation. We have some extra sensors on there for these demonstration flights. Uh, we have more of them on during uh, power descent, but we 